Hey, welcome back. I'm Martin Burgess. And I'm Dan Enriquez. And this is a Back in Time episode of The Mariah Report. We're traveling back to the MC30 days of a couple of years ago. Well, and we're traveling back to MC30. And from MC30, we're going way back to the rainbow era. Time warp. Exactly. But we listen, we got time, we can travel there, okay? Yeah. So this week, we are going to take a look at all the EPs that Mariah released for MC30 for the Rainbow album. Right, because again, like we did the other week when we dug into the Butterfly era, there's so many good things that were forgotten about because so much stuff was coming out so quickly that it got buried. So we're going back and we're looking through the files and the archives. That's right. And some of these things we haven't really had on streaming before Mm -hmm. or that, you know, we've had like, you know, the low qualities or the, you know, whatever, the Napster version. (laughs) You guys remember those days. But now we got it all streaming here and uh, we're going to dig in. We're going to dig in because we got like four, we got four, four Four albums, four EPs EPs. of Rainbow. Ton of remixes. Yeah. Okay. Let's get into it. Totally. Okay. Why don't we like sort of work backwards? I think one of the final uh, singles to get released in real time back in the day, the 1999-2000 era, was Against All Odds. Yes. Now, here's the other thing. It was released as a single everywhere except for the US. Mm -hmm. So we did not get any of these remixes unless you bought the imported CD Mm -hmm. or again, you got it from a sharing service over there on the online world. Now back for the kids, (laughs) back in the day when the internet was still hot and fresh and a new thing, there would be these, what would you call them? Like apps, I guess? You had like download Napster. Yeah. Software. It's called software. Software, but I think today you would call it an app. Yes, essentially, yes. But for your computer, not your telephone. Right. We're not there yet. No, no, no. (laughs) Didn't exist, the telephone situation. But so you would download Napster. It was basically the black internet. Yeah. And so you would share, and it was full of viruses. Your computer was probably going to be infected any minute, risking your computer to download Mariah Carey content. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) But it was worth it. It was worth it. It was. It was. (laughs) But this is where you would be able to find those mp3 files of remixes etc that other folk had uploaded from their european singles (laughs) so for against all odds i think the big thing for this particular single was her duet with uh westlife which was a boy band from back in the day yes now how familiar are you with westlife because i other than this mariah moment i can't really tell you much else about them in those days So, you know, Australia and England have a strong connection, Mm -hmm. Queen, blah, 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 blah. Uh, A lot of culture, pop culture, you know, transferred back and forth. So Westlife was huge in Australia. There's a big deal um, for her to be singing with them. They're enormous in England and Europe. Oh, so so she's uh, going going to the right people here. Exactly. Like they were like big, like in sync level. Yes. Big. Okay. Big, big, big. I may have to go back one of these days and see. I think I know they had a hit song here, maybe. Probably, you probably know some of their bops. I probably do, just can't remember. But Uh, I want to say also like when Against All Odds came out, I think they wanted to take the same route that With Without You had, where it was this cover song and Europe just loves it so much. Oh, right, right, The big ballad, the big power ballad. Mm -hmm. So I think that this was a push for that moment again. Yeah, and then she gets to collaborating with the uh, hottest boy band. Exactly. So it's it's very big. It's very big. And this single did do very well because not only did they perform it a couple times together, her and Westlife, but they also did a music video as well. They did. They did. Do you remember that? I do. Yes. Why are you laughing, girl? (laughs) I forgot about it. (laughs) <laughs> it was cute they were on the boats lip syncing for their lives it was a good one <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah we didn't have that in our notes but we remembered <laughs> i remembered i remembered <laughs> that's not part of mc30 that is it was a hd for the no, i'm just giving information girl i'm not it's not i'm just saying <laughs> Where's that file to be HD? Yes, I, they probably lost that original footage, girl. <laughs> so, but it is on YouTube. It's just not like been remastered, I don't think. Is it on Mariah's page? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I watched it recently. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't remember if it's in HD because I have bad eyesight. So sometimes I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I do remember she had the good curly hair. Yeah. Good it was cute. It was cute. And so, honestly, 
let's get serious now this i didn't even know that there was an against all ads single coming out because here in america i didn't know until i saw the video that's like what you know sparked me onto all of that and then i you know you get the import single or you get the mp3 from online and and that's just how it goes yeah and remember at this time too she was uh vocally talking not vocally she was being vocal about the turmoil at the label that they won't promote particular singles and stuff oh yeah so you did kind of think maybe they were just going to give up on promoting singles or releasing singles oh yeah for sure i mean there was there was a whole debacle when it comes to the can't take that away single Mm -hmm. uh back in the day Mm. and that's why the cry baby then here in america was on the b-side and that's all we really got Mm -hmm. we didn't we didn't get i mean we got thank god i find found you but like again Mm -hmm. very very little Mm -hmm. very little little to nothing so that's when these when these things come out for MC30, that's why we get like re-excited for these things because right. there's some good remixes for the MC30 of Against All Odds. There is. Well, there's the Westlife version where they are on it. Mm-hmm. So you can hear that. But then there's some club mixes yes. as well. Now I'm a big fan of the Pound Boy. That's my favorite. Pound too. Boys. Yes. Now she didn't re-sing any of these vocals, but it, they're not bad. Cute. They're pops. They're pops. cute. Put it on the gym playlist. Yes, yes, Stairmaster all the way. Throw it on, yeah. Do they even have Stairmasters still nowadays? Yes, they do. Oh, okay, good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, those things are here. There's also um, like a main mix and a deep dub mix. So like if you're uh, if you're there for the club, it, it got you, it mm-hmm. got you. And those beautiful, beautiful Mariah vocals. You got options. Yes, absolutely. Against all odds. Love it. I know, I, but again, glad it's on the streaming because this is stuff that gets forgotten about and buried. Yeah, like the video. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, so we love that. But also, thank God I found you was an MC30 uh, good moment as well. Mm-hmm. Because now that was a, a like a regular single uh, for most territories. Mm-hmm. And so we did have those remixes. And a number one. Oh, and a number one. And yeah. a number one. Now she had all the duets or collaborators on this one. She had the 98 Degrees. Mm-hmm. Oh, she was very boy bandy. Well, that was the vibe of the day, remember? It, well, true. True. Spice Girls. Yeah. The boy mm-hmm. bands. Yeah, all of that. All okay. the Destiny Child. Well, she was with us. She was doing it. She was doing it. Yeah. So th- thank God I found you with 98 Degrees and um, Joe. Joe. Love it. Love everything about it. Mm -hmm. The video is a like a live performance moment, which is HD Mm -hmm. for the MC30. Make sure we get it all crystal clear. Yeah. Um, But what are what are some of your favorite remixes from that one? I actually like the Make It Lost remix, not the club mix. (gasps) Oh, oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. You're right. That is the remix of all the Thank God I Found You remixes. Yes. Which also comes with a music video as well. It does a good one too. Yes, absolutely. I think they filmed it in Germany. It's basically like a club scene. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. That's a good one. Yeah, with Joe and Nas. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's my favorite. Because again, the club mixes don't quite do it for me, but they are right. I mean, they're cute because they're not necessarily club club mixes they're more like just like a simple remix like up tempo ish yeah or like they're more like um there some of them are stripped down and you hear Mm. more vocal Mm -hmm. Uh, so they're like those types of remixes they're not like up in the club right you know but i like those because for me like i love the vocal so some of these are really good okay i will say okay kitchen table talk i will say thank god i found you i think didn't age well it sounds dated this is why I like the Make It Last mix because it ages nicely. Yeah, I will I will agree on that one. But also maybe because she was doing this song with, you know, boy Nine bands eight. of the moment. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Those people don't have the type of longevity. Mm-hmm. And sing. it was a particular sound. Exactly, exactly. In those days. But hey, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. We have that. I will say my favorite of the mixes that are on there outside of the Make It Last remix, because that's it. That's that's like a whole new song. But the celebratory mix, I think, is the one that I like the best because it is sort of on a softer note. Mm-hmm. And you just get more vocals from it. You do. Yeah. You do. So I'm, I'm a fan of that one. Every every once in a while when I'm in a thank God I found you mood. That's what I go to. for. Yeah. Okay, good to know. <laughs> now you know a little bit more about me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I, something I need to discover is I remember on the Remixes album, the Mariah uh-huh. Remixes album. Yes. That Make It Last, Thank God I Found You, 
has some extra vocals at the end. Is that right? Yes, I need to just figure out if it's on these EPs, if they're on there. Oh, interesting. Well, we might have to do some sleuthing now. Mm-hmm. I because just remembered that. Sometimes I, you know, I, I hear songs so many times that I I don't always hear those little things because I think I'm just listening to the same song. Mm. But yes, I like when she does things like that. Right. Sneaks a little something else uh, extra in there. Yeah, I got to circle back to that. We love that. We love that. All right. So one of uh, my favorites that came out was the Can't Take That Away single. Love, love, love. And again, happy that it's here on the EP so it's accessible because that mm-hmm. came with things that we love, club mixes. Yes. Uh, yes. Again, and again, a regular ballad on the album. Yes. Big power ballad that we all love. Beautiful. Love that song. Love it. Right. And so we have some David Morales mixes. And so we have good ones, David uh club mixes where we don't have a resung vocal it's the standard album version vocal and he does his thing to it Mm -hmm. but then we have something that i in the day i found it amazing it's still amazing today is the triumphant remix oh yes now that's the remix of these remixes yes yes that's the one where she goes in it's it has like a a great sultriness to it her voice is very raspy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was she on tour or was that when she was sick do you remember Um, the the oyster incident Yes, I do. I do. That was around the Divas Live 2000. Right. So I think, I don't know when she recorded these though, because I can't remember right off the top of my head when this was released. It was after Divas because on the US version, they had the Love Hangover Heartbreaker. Right. So it came out after Divas. Right. So I'm thinking it probably came out in like early June oh, or something right. like you're that. You're right. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she was raspy on that too. Yeah. I mean, but I love Raspy. I love it. No, I love it, it too. It works for me. Yeah, Especially same. like in this Can't Take That Away remix, it's spoken. Mm-hmm. Oh, I need to speak to Very house. Very popular right now. It's very house-centric. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I love it. And so fun fact about it is that when Mariah was in Australia on tour, two tours ago, around the American Idol days, she had her single out called Triumphant. And it turns out that she didn't sing Triumphant on the Triumphant tour. She played the Triumphant remix of Can't Take That Away. Yes, yes. The original Triumphant moment. Yeah, yeah. So that was a fun twist. It's been performed live. Right, exactly. I love when Mariah's giving these club mixes a moment on stage. She Mm -hmm. did this sort of with um, the Caution tour. She did a couple Mm -hmm. of remixes, like the Always Be My Baby. Fantasy on a Uh, Sweet Sweet Fantasy tour. Exactly. So I love that she has been out there putting these remixes in in people's ears Mm -hmm. uh, more than, you know, most people do. So love it. Oh, and she actually did the Triumphant remix of Can't Take That Away at the Caution tour. Oh, yes, she did. Yeah, yes, remember? yes. Oh, yes, when she came oh, out. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're remembering all kinds of things. And that's exactly what Back in Times are for. Right. Um, so, but yeah, we love that. Can't Take That Away was great. The live performances, all the remixes, mm-hmm. the video, which is an HD over there on the YouTube. Mm-hmm. So good. So good. So good. Um, yeah, good moments from that. Yeah, let's take a quick splash break and then we're going to come back and talk about the big single from this Rainbow Era MC30. Let's do it. The Mariah Report is supported by podcastcbd.com. Use the promo code REPORT to get 10% off of any purchase and free shipping on orders over $50. Dan, I'm so excited to bring this product to our listeners because it's something that I've been taking for a while now. And at podcastcbd.com, you can get something called Wild Gummies. They come in the raspberry flavor. They are delicious. Now, I've been hearing everybody in the streets talk about CBD this, CBD that, and I have no idea what CBD is. Think of it as a natural compound or even as a supplement that you add to your health regimen. So CBD is something that your body makes naturally, your brain makes it, especially after you exercise. And so taking a gummy uh, gives your body a boost. And I actually used to be a skeptic until I realized that I was doing it completely wrong. Well, how, what were you doing wrong? How are you supposed to do it right? So when I first tried it, I was just taking like one dose. I wasn't even measuring how much I was taking. I just tried it and hoped for the best. And really nothing really happened at all. I didn't feel anything, didn't do anything. So I just thought it was bogus. However, somebody explained to me that what you need to do is measure how much you're taking. So for example, the gummies, the wild gummies, they are 25 milligrams a piece. 
And then so you know the, the know the dose and then you take it daily to get the benefits. And what are the benefits of these CBD gummies? So the main one for me is that I used to have horrible sleep issues. I couldn't get to sleep, couldn't stay asleep. I would wake up in the middle of the night. I wasn't falling asleep until 2 a.m. It wasn't good. So I started taking these to help with that. And I found it really did help me fall asleep earlier. And I was able to stay asleep and I was waking up refreshed as well. That was the main benefit of it. And I also found it really helped with my anxiety that I had. It's brought me back from anxiety attack several times. It kind of just takes the edge off it. Again, nat completely natural. And then the shocking thing that happened was it really cleared up a lot of my joint pain after a couple of weeks. Uh -huh. And unlike taking a Tylenol or something like that, that just covers up the pain and temporarily relieves it, it actually got rid of the inflammation in, in my joints. Well, these benefits sound real yummy to me, so I might not need to go get some of these gummies. Yeah, so make sure you head over to podcastcbd.com, use the promo code REPORT to support this podcast, The Mariah Report, and get yourself some premium lab-tested hemp CBD products. All right. So many good rainbow EPs to play around with. Oh, so many. But this, this one we're about to talk to right now, talk about, this is the one right here. Literally now, one. The, number one. Another number one. <laughs> <laughs> another number one and another one. This was number one on not only just the Billboard Hot 100, but also the number one on the dance chart as well. Yes. So this was covering all the bases here. And we're going to talk more about it. But the dance remix, Junior Vasquez might be my number one club remix for Mariah of all time. Ooh. I know, I know. It's sort of hard. It's sort of hard. But when you really dive into it, it's it's brilliant. It's brilliant. No, it is. I think it's clever how she used If You Should Ever Be Lonely yes. as a part of it. Mm -hmm. I think it gives the remix a whole new dimension to it. It takes you on a whole new journey throughout the song. Yes, there's levels to this remix. Yes, it it goes in and out. It bops and weaves and does all of those types of good things. It's it's a classic. Mm -hmm. It's genius, and this does not get enough recognition. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely not. Yeah. So you know they're using it in that movie Bros with Billy Eichner. Yes. It's a part of. It's a feature song in that film. So it's nice to see it getting dug up and used again and giving it a you know um, shining some a spotlight on it because. Unless MC30 came out again, it would have just lived on people's CD singles right. at home. Yeah, that are probably collecting dust because nobody has a CD player anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's and it's also bringing it to a whole new audience of people, yeah. a whole new generation. And when they hear that song, they'll be like, oh, I love this song. And now let's go stream it. Mm -hmm. So MC30 got us covered for all the streamings. So as I was digging through the Heartbreaker EP. So there is the Junior Vasquez remix with If You Should Ever Be Lonely, but there are also alternative versions of it, whether If You Should Ever Be Lonely starts the song and then she mm -hmm. goes into Heartbreaker. And I discovered this whole like vocal moment I've totally forgot about that's not in the other ones. Yes, you have to sort of make them a little bit different from each other. So she's, again, sneaking in little extra vocals here and there. Right, but it shows you why you have to listen to all the mixes because there's different things, different nuances throughout them all. And thank goodness they're on streaming so you can go yes. and go from one to the other one to the other uh -huh. and you can like just let it all flow it's it's amazing i could listen to the heartbreaker mc30 ep from beginning to end and yes. we got everything on this ep not just the junior vasquez remix we got the heartbreaker with jay-z the album version the no got, rap version the no rap version the missy elliott debrat version mm -hmm. so many versions all the versions but the version the version <laughs> is uh i'm trying to think it was it i think it's my favorite actually it's my okay maybe this is like one of my favorite uh live performances i guess of heartbreaker it's the heartbreaker slash love hangover yes mix. absolutely which she debuted at the 2000 vh1 divas live concert a tribute to diana ross and i think we were all gagged Right. So why did she pick Love Hangover? Because the show was a tribute to Diana Ross. There was an, an intent in picking mm -hmm. that song. 
Um, and not just singing a Diana Ross song, she put her own twist on it. Right. And it's like, these are like some of the times where like Mariah is mashing up songs before anybody else that's popular is mashing up songs. I mean, people do it, people sample things, but mm -hmm. like, this is like a true mashup. Same thing like with, uh, she was mashing up a lot. Now we have to go and talk about all the mashups because the uh, Thank God I Found You, Make It Last was a mashup. That was a good mash. The... Uh, <laughs> The uh, Val Young, If You Should Ever Be Lonely, is essentially a mashup. Yes. And then this Diana Ross Love Hangover is a mashup. Well, mashup and mixtapes are very in. Yeah. So Mariah's always had her her ear to, you know, the, the ground when it comes to mashing up and what's being played in the club and mm -hmm. who the hot DJs are. Mm -hmm. And this just proves it because she was doing this decades and decades and decades ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, maybe not that many decades, but... <laughs> To me, I never would put together Love Hangover and Heartbreak. So the fact that she could make it work, think of that and make it work. Yeah. I'm like, that's a genius, genius move. Yeah. I mean, that just speaks to Mariah's sort of like ear, mm -hmm. you know, and just her Rolodex or her, you know, encyclopedia level knowledge of other music mm -hmm. and how she can incorporate her her own music and her own melodies into other other people's music. And it's brilliant. Yeah, but also shows you the versatility of her uh, songwriting and production skills because Love Hangover is a disco song. And so Heartbreaker was a hip hop, R&B, pop centric song mixed into a club mix. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. now she's mixed into this disco version of it. Right. And we have to also remember the album version has a sample, mm -hmm. a heavy sample as well. So she's using all these other sort of like um, genres of music to sample into all these different heartbreakers. Girl, she was giving us everything for Rainbow, and I cannot say more how much I love it. I know. And again, so I remember when I first heard Love Hangover, I had to bootleg version it, probably downloaded the Napster version yeah, that yeah. someone did. <laughs> uh, that was my go-to copy of it. And then... Let me think, how did she release this? Oh, then it came out officially as the cry part of the Crybaby single. Oh. On CD. Oh, okay. So I had to import that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. From yes. somewhere. Was that in America? I Well, here in America, they... Because there was two, two versions of Can't Take That Away. One had Crybaby on it. Mm-hmm. Or oh, they both had Crybaby on no, it? No, I think one was the Crybaby. Yes. And that's the one that had Love Hangover Heartbreaker live okay. version. Okay. And that was like a three-track. Something like that. And then they had the separate one. You're right. Okay. With the Can't Take That Away remixes. Yes. The triumphant okay. and yes, all of those yes. things. There was a yeah. confusion going on. Yeah. But whatever. One of them had the love hangover. Mm -hmm. So we had an official release of it. I know. I know. Right. And then with Heartbreaker here, you had, uh, you know, just the regular version and then the cl club mixes on the CD. Mm -hmm. But now you got everything. Like we were just saying, all the, the album version, all the remixes, all on one digital EP. Mm-hmm. Love it. I don't have to be searching around, no. you know, you all these different places. Go to, find to the it. Heartbreaker section and there it all is. And that's why we love MC30. Yes. I'm telling you. Yes. It's yes. great that somebody. And the other thing is there's so many versions. I'm glad that somebody had to go through and make sure they were all properly named, properly placed, mm -hmm. and we're not forgetting any. Yeah. Like it's fully done and it's packaged perfectly. I know. Yes. Love it. Love it. Good stuff up in there. I'm telling you, if you guys have not gotten back into this heartbreaker, if you should ever be lonely, that's where it's at. Now's the time. That's it. Yeah, the high it. notes. So good. The, the 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 belting. Yeah. The background vocal, the layered, the stacked vocals. Oh, yes, yes. All of it. I can't. The club thump. Oh. <laughs> All of it. Junior Vasquez was huge back in the day. Everybody thinks of like Mariah and David Morales, mm -hmm. and they were brilliant together. But when she got with Junior on this one, just as good. It, I think it even goes a little bit harder, and I like it a little bit harder up in the club. Let me think. Is it harder? <laughs> a little. It's a little it's harder. A little. You're it's right. a little. Yeah. It's a little. You know, there's a little more dirt on it, mm -hmm. and I love it. I mm -hmm. love it. So, Rainbow MC30 got you covered, girl. Yes, that's it. So yes. get into it. Go digging. Yes. Again, thanks so much for listening. Did we cover everything, Dan? I think we did. Yes, we did. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget you can go support this podcast by heading over to patreon.com slash the Mariah Report. Pledge as little as $5 a month. Cancel anytime. And you get tons of bonus content over there. 
That's right. And you can also visit us on YouTube. Here we are. Just um, review, rate, comment, s- click, smash the like. That's what they do over there. Do something, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's it for today. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. The Mariah Report is produced and edited by Dan Enriquez and Martin Burgess. Hosted by Dan Enriquez and Martin Burgess. Graphics created by Sean Mark. Theme music created by e Beats. Thank you to the listeners who support the show on Patreon. If you'd like to show your support or for more information, visit the show notes in your podcast app.